Coming up on the November 15th edition of the Met Report, the men's basketball team is gearing up for this season and we'll take a look at how they're doing. Michael Ronnebaum takes us to a mysterious and historic location just blocks away from campus. And student vets were honored honoraria. All this and more coming up on the Met Report. Welcome to the Met Report. I am Kiwi Brockington. And I'm Karen Vega. If you're in the mood for some laughs and a free show, come see Metro's production of You Can't Take It With You this weekend at the King Center. This comedy kicks off November 14th through the 24th with shows at 7.30 every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. You can catch an earlier performance at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday the 24th. Visit the box office in the King Center and show your Metro student ID to get your tickets. The brand new 12 and a half acre athletic complex finally has a name. The Regency Athletic Complex at MSU Denver, President Stephen Jordan announced yesterday a 10 year, $1 million deal. President Jordan says this sponsorship supports a portion of the cost for construction. The complex will be the new home of men's and women's soccer, baseball, softball, and tennis. It includes a 20,000 square foot building to house locker rooms and a strength and conditioning facility. The university will use the complex to host sports and activities for the surrounding community youth. Construction crews have finished the tennis courts. The soccer stadium is next in line for fall of 2014. The softball and baseball fields will arrive in spring of 2015. New figures show student cheating is rising on college campuses in Colorado. CU Boulder reports cheating rose 50% within the last five years. DU says cheating has risen 27% and CSU says cheating is up 14%. The biggest problem is plagiarism. Universities use a software program called Turnitin.com. This software detects phrases in papers that were lifted from another source. This past Monday, Auraria Campus held a Veterans Day parade to honor all veterans. Met reporter Lennox Williams was on site to give all the details. Veterans Day marked an official holiday to honor everyone who has served in the armed services. This occurred every November 11th to signify the end of major hostility in World War I on this day 95 years ago. I think it's a great thing that we have on campus, you know, I mean, we've got a great day for it, you know, it honors the people that deserve to be honored that, you know, did their service for us, protected us, so, you know, the least, you know, as a community, the least we could do for them, so. Rio Campus actually has a pretty significant uh, veterans population uh, here among the student body, so it's nice that we can have this event and, and get out and meet new people, some people who might not know, necessarily know that they have other veterans in their classes and things like that. The Scottish American Military Society Limited were some of the different military branches that were on hand to help commemorate this special day. We carried the five service flags, and it's just a way, I think, of A, recognizing the five services that, uh, that defend this nation. All three universities were in coordination to help military personnel and, and active duty and eligible uh, dependents use their GI Bill. Students and campus had a message for all the veterans. I want to thank all the veterans who have served, who have given their life for me. For the Met Report, Lennox Williams. Metro State continues to make headlines across the nation. This time we take the spotlight for top regional colleges and universities for 2014. MSU Denver ranked 23rd out of 1,800 schools. The story from U.S. News and World Report ranked Metro based on 16 factors. Only three other schools charge lower tuition out of the schools ranked. Many students attending MSU Denver have had an event that has molded their lives in a certain way. Daniel Roberts has experienced a life most can only imagine. Roberts is a student at Metro studying for his Bachelor's of Science in kindergarten through 12th grade physical education. 
Roberts is also a survivor from a young lifetime of pain, addiction, loss, and doubt. Through these struggles, Roberts found poetry and wrote the book, A Beautiful Mind in an Ugly Place. We asked Roberts what was behind telling his story. A Beautiful Mind in an Ugly Place. And we clicked on it and she was like, what is that? I was like, oh, that's just something I wrote, you know? And she asked me to send her like the first 13 chapters. And then after I did, she's like, you have to 100% bona fide, without a doubt, turn this into a book. So I did. E-F-I-L, or life spelled backwards, is Robert's favorite poem so far. The metaphorical tone spells out the change Robert's made in his life. I was living backwards, said Roberts. I wanted to change things around. Art comes in many forms, and Metro's student-run literary, literary and art magazine wants to see it all. The Metrosphere is looking for your submissions, which are due November 30th. All creative works are welcome as long as they meet adequate standards and required technical specifications. This year's theme is cross-pollination, which includes any art that falls in between two categories. Check out metrosphere.org for more information on how you can get your art published in this magazine. Wow, I think that is fascinating that you can have the opportunity to submit your work. If I had the talent, I would totally do it. Absolutely agree, Karen. And also for folks that don't have the talent initially, if it's something that they want to pursue in the future, here's their opportunity. That's right. Get out there. Yeah. Coming up after the break, the Metro basketball teams were out tailgating on campus today. Stay with us as we continue our in-depth look into our men's basketball. And we have more must entertainment news here coming up after the break. Welcome back. After the tragic typhoon that devastated the Philippines last week, many people are asking what they can do to help. The food kiosk A Taste of the Philippines on 16th Street Mall is donating a portion of its proceeds this month. Kiosk owner and Philippines native Kathy Gaytel says her uncle lost his house and is living in a shelter. A Taste of the Philippines serves up traditional Filipino food seven days a week. Stop by the 16th and Stout location to help Kathy's cause if you wish to donate. Convicted serial killer Joseph Paul Franklin is scheduled for execution on November 20th. Hustler Magazine publisher Larry Flint has spoken out against the execution. Flint stated in a Huffington Post interview that life in a 3x6 cell is worse punishment than the death penalty. Franklin is on death row in Missouri for eight murders. He also claims to be the shooter in a 1978 assassination attempt that left Larry Flint paralyzed from the waist down. Flint says that the judicial system is about justice, not vengeance. Flint argues that the death penalty is about vengeance. The FDA is moving towards banning trans fats across the country. These are mostly used to preserve flavored foods for restaurants. Most companies have already taken action to get rid of the fats altogether. This ban could affect all businesses across the country, with large businesses leading the way to change. Processed goods, frozen foods, fast foods, coffee creamers, spreads, and microwavable foods are all known to contain trans fats. A rare holiday is making its debut this century. The holiday is called Thanksgivinga. This holiday falls on November 28th, which is Thanksgiving Day. 
Thanksgiving always falls on the last Thursday of the month in November. Hanukkah happens to start on the same day this year. The last time this holiday happened was back in 1888. Make sure you enjoy your Thanksgiving this year. The next time you'll be able to celebrate it again will be in the year 77,798. Happy Thanksgiving. Valentine's Day will be more than just hearts and candy this coming year. The holiday will also mark the opening of three Trader Joe's grocery stores. City officials have long wanted Trader Joe's in town. The three locations will be at Boulder's 29th Street Mall, East 8th Avenue and Colorado Boulevard in Denver and at the Cherry Hills Marketplace. Trader Joe's has two other stores planned for Capitol Hill and Fort Collins. All right, Karen, wow, it's actually interesting to hear about these Trader Joe's. It's going to be interesting to see how they compare with the Whole Foods and the variety that they can give consumers. That's right. I think the biggest uh, factor that's going to determine who is better is customer service. Absolutely. We'll have to wait and see. That's right. Well, coming up after the break, Michael Ronnebaum takes us to Blake Street. But first, Lennox Williams has next week's forecast. How's the weather, Lennox? Thanks, guys. Denver will be doing okay for now, but let's check out what's going on in the middle of the country. We've got low temperature moving into this big storm system that will produce lots of rain and lots of snow for the Midwest and the Great Lakes region. And also, there's a Pacific Northwest storm that's brewing up in Seattle and it's trying to make its way down into Denver. Now moving on to our Sunday national forecast. As the storm makes its way down to Denver, there will be lots of snow in the mountain and very little bit of light, or light snow in the Denver area. And also, there will be a cold front that will be hovering over Denver, will keep, keep the weather very, very cold until Monday. Now moving on to a Saturday local forecast. In Boulder, it will be in the IF 54 and a low of 31. In Denver, it will be in the IF 54 and a low of 30. But down in Lamar, it will be a very hot scorching day with a high of 66 and a low of 30. Now moving on to our Sunday local forecast. Over up in Boulder again, it will be the high of 47 and a low of 24. Down in Gunnison, it will be a low of minus one and a high of 31. And also in Durango, it will be a high of 41 and a low of 18. Up in Denver, it will be a high of 47 and a low of 31. In Colorado Springs, a high of 46 and a low of 20. Now moving on to a five day forecast. On Monday, it will be a high of 46, a low of 25. Tuesday and Wednesday, it will be 50 and 58 for the highs and 31 and 28 for the lows respectively. On Thursday, it will be the high of 57, a low of 33. And on Friday, it will be in the high of 54 and low of 30. I'm Lennox with the weather. We'll be right back. Where I bring Hollywood a mile high. Aligning the Hollywood stars over Denver. I'm here to bring you the latest juicy gossip from the mile high to the streets of Hollywood. Give your most handsome look to that camera. Where I'll be bringing you the latest gossip from Tinseltown all the way up to a mile high. I didn't get any injuries. <laughs> you were okay. I was okay. You were I was a little okay. dancing. Yeah. You know. Check us out every Friday live at 12:30 p.m. on the Merit Board. Now joining us for Entertain Met is Michael Ronnebaum. What's the latest, Michael? Thanks, Karen. With finals right around the corner, it's time to take a break, grab some popcorn, and kick back. Here is EMET's must-sees of the week. This is the 75th year of the Hunger Games. It's time for The Hunger Games, and it's coming to theaters next week. In this sequel, it's on for Katniss Everdeen and Peter Malark as they have to deal with a rebellion in the district of Panem. Tune in to entertainment next week as Hassan Shah sits down exclusively with Willow Shields, who plays Katniss's little sister, Primrose Everdeen, and you will not guess what her favorite hobby is. I'm not afraid. Then come out.
then you'll be afraid. Yep, that costume was terrifying. Believe it or not, it's Angelina Jolie, starring in Disney's Maleficent. We all know the story of Sleeping Beauty, but now it is all about Maleficent and what drove her to have the coldest heart and to curse Princess Aurora. The trailer released earlier this week and the movie comes out in theaters May 2014. Can't tell you how good it is to have all of us under the same roof again. Tis the season to be fighting. That's what Nia Long, Terrence Howard, and Tay Diggs do in Best Man Holiday. Things get tense as former college buddies reunite after 15 years over the holidays. It's never too long for long forgotten romances and rivalries to heat back up. The movie is out now and is rated R. From the big screen to comic books, Marvel reveals a new Miss Marvel, a Muslim female. Marvel Comics announced a new hero in the series. It is a 16-year-old New Jersey teen, and no, it is not one of those girls from the Jersey Shore. The hero's name is Kamala Khan, a Pakistani-American who may be able to change her body shape. As a Muslim female, she is obligated not only to save the world from evil, but to please her parents and to be home by curfew. The co-creator of the creator, uh, excuse me, of the character, Willow Wilson, hopes to promote a positive image of Muslims in the media. I went around campus, asked a couple of Muslims, and got their take on having a Muslim as a heroic comic figure. That's a great thing. Females can be heroes as well. Uh, you female know. Muslim. Yeah, female Muslim girls. There's nothing wrong with being a hero. I think slapping the title Muslim on Kamala Khan, it's going to allow non-Muslims who don't have very much knowledge about Islam except for what the media depicts, it'll allow them to relate to Kamala Khan and, and think to themselves, you know what, Muslims are not all terrorists and they're not all evil as CNN and Fox News depicts. She's portrayed as wearing short sleeves, which as a Muslim girl you should not be wearing. And I feel that it's going to negatively affect the perception Muslim girls have about themselves. One place that probably needs a superhero? A haunted bar in Denver. Looking to go somewhere that is historic and mysterious? Then Blake Street Vault is the place for you. Uh, Blake Street Vault is the second oldest building in Denver. Um, we were the second bar to ever open in Denver, so there's a lot of history here. Um, but it's also meshed with like the downtown, kind of Lodo crowd right now. We still have DJs every Friday, Saturday. Great happy hours, cozy atmosphere. It's just a really, really good place to be. There is also a dark side to the Blake Street Vault. An underground vault containing bullet holes, scratch marks, and murder makes for exciting tourism. We asked Connor if he had any first-hand paranormal experiences. As far as my experiences have gone, I've never actually seen anything, but I've been downstairs and I've walked into cold spots before, and it's just, it's got a weird feeling to it, and, you know, like it right, the hair in the back of your neck stands up, and just gets super chilly, and you're just, it's kind of creepy. We have stories of our rocking chairs downstairs that'll move by themselves. Um, Lydia is the famous, the house ghost, so feel free to come in, uh, get spooked and drink a Moscow mule. You know guys, even though that bar is a little creepy, they also have a great happy hour, so how about afterwards I get the first round at the Blake Street Vault? Okay, you said it. We know where we're going after. Wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Just in time for the weekend. Just in time. Yes. Still to come, the volleyball season is coming to a close. Are playoffs in their future? Jeffrey Will joins us for Met Report Sports. All night long and do it all again so I can find my way back home. The sun seems to shine a little less since you've been gone. You were the one I wanted. Don't stray, don't ever go away. I'm just smiling, everyone will want to go with it. Oh.
from the Colorado School of Mines in Golden. To Black Hill State University in South Dakota. To Colorado State University in Pueblo. For more than 100 years, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference has stood for excellence in the classroom and on the playing field. With 14 great colleges and universities, student athletes in the RMAC achieve on a national stage while earning their college degrees. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference continuing the tradition of excellence. <laughs> Now joining us is Jeffrey Will for the Met Report Sports. How did the women's soccer team do in the RMAC tournament this week, Jeff? Well, hang on there, Keeve. We'll get there in just a second, but first we're going to talk some track and field. Metro's cross country participated last Saturday in Canyon, Texas for a shot to qualify for nationals. Let's start with the guys. Senior Kirk Harvey broke the school's 10K record by one second. He placed 11th in with the time of 30 minutes and 48 seconds. Junior Nick Cadlick wasn't too far behind when he made the time of 14th slot with a time of 30 minutes and 57 seconds. Now for the ladies, sophomore Janelle Lings came in fourth, clocking in at 21:31 in the 6K run, setting a new best individual finish for the school. Brianna Hemming came in eighth at the 21:41 mark, setting a new personal best by 24 seconds. Both teams will be competing in the NCAA Championship in Spokane, Washington on November 23rd. The Roadrunners took on the 15th ranked School of Mines on Saturday on Mines home turf in Golden. Last time those two teams faced off, Metro pulled the upset in a thrilling four-set match. The Roadrunners struggled to fend off the Ore Diggers offense, losing in the first set. In the second set, Metro managed to tie it up twice, but it wasn't enough to hold Mines back as they take the set. Mines looked to run ahead in the third, but Metro tied it up again, making it coming up the time. Junior Lauren Keanu nailed back-to-back -back kills, giving Metro the momentum they needed to make the win. Metro kept this momentum going through the fourth, but Mines kept pace. After exchanging blows on both sides, Metro wins the set, forcing the fifth. Metro led the set, Mines, but Mines kept rallied together and won the last set 18 to 16. While we wish we could have come away with that win, it is a confidence booster knowing that we can stay with a team like that. Just work a little harder the next couple weeks and we can pull out a win. With that loss, Metro falls to 11 and 6 in the RMAC and 15 and 10 overall. They will ba be back in action against Black Hills State University tonight at home at 7 p.m. where they are honoring coach Debbie Hendricks for the, her 500th career win. Women's soccer went up to Golden last Friday to take on Fort Lewis in the RMAC semifinals. Fort Lewis controlled much of the game but could not get hit the net thanks to redshirt freshman Carissa Fernandez. Hope came when junior Chris Price, who managed to weave through the Fort Lewis defense, drive it home just to have it popped over the net. Fort Lewis regains control in the, of the game and Fernandez continues to deny the Skyhawks all the way until regulation time. Score stayed 0-0 throughout regulation. One minute into overtime, Skyhawks Emma Canis nails a shot, slips past Zra Fernandez. Freshman Zaria Fair dashes for the block. Wasn't enough. Fort Lewis takes the win 1-0. Obviously disappointed with the loss. Um, you know, we'll wait to have to see about postseason whether we get in or not. Um, but, you know, I think for the girls, you know, like I told them tonight, you just you got to keep your heads high and let's see what happens. And they're waiting paid off. They will be facing Midwestern tonight at 4 p.m. for the first round in the NCAA tournament in Golden. This will be their 12th consecutive appearance in the NCAA, the longest running active streak in Division II. Now, how do you top what the men's basketball team did last year? Besides finishing the national championship? You don't. Five new players come in to try and repeat what Roadrunners did last year, and for the returners, it's just another season with high expectations and a chance to reach national stage once again. Kevin Hall has more. Metro State is going to Atlanta. The Roadrunners knock off the number one ranked West Liberty Hilltoppers. The Giant has fallen. While the team would end up losing in that national championship game by one point, the 2012-2013 season was one that won't soon be forgotten, nor should it. When you come up a little bit short in a game of that magnitude, it'll always kind of stay with you. You know, it's an individual thing, though. You deal with it individually. One of those individuals is senior guard Brandon Jefferson. The hero of so many big games last year was recently named the RMAX Preseason Player of the Year. 
uh, I was I was excited. I mean, it's four years of hard work that I put in here at Metro State. I, I know what I need to do. I mean, I got great teammates and great coaching staff that's going to put me in the right position to see. So I'm not no pressure. When you get that kind of notoriety, there's a different kind of pressure that comes. I don't want him to put pressure on himself. I have to live up to that, you know, billing that they tabbed him at. He just has to be a great leader for our team and just start it there, and everything will take care of itself. With Jefferson being the one returning senior, it will be up to the other returners in Mitch McCarron and Nick Kay to help guide the five new players, three of which are fellow Aussies. They're looking good. They've come in, they've done a lot of work over the summer and during this preseason, so they're looking good and they should be a good part of our, our, our system this year. When they came in, I definitely helped them out as much as I could, helped them with anything they needed. Not only are the men picked first in the conference and the region, they were also voted number one in the nation. Not bad for national runners-up. You know, that ranking's not going to win games. If anything, it makes the games a little bit tougher, you know, because people want to make a mark when you have a tradition that, that we've built here. There's no pressure added to us. I mean, we expect to be number one this year, so we're just going to come hard, work hard every day in practice. One point was the difference between losing and winning the national championship last year. And with all the hard work and practice, the team hopes to be on the other side of that one-point game. Kevin Hall, Met Report Sports. Metro looks to start that trip back into the NCAA by going up against Texas A&M Kingsville today, actually. And then next week, they're heading off to Ari Tucson, Arizona to go up against our good friends at Ro the Division I team, Rhode Island University. And if anything, Miles Potter and Kevin Hall will be there on front row seats to check it out and give us all the action. Awesome. Best of luck to them today, and I can't wait to catch that uh, live stream from Arizona. It's going to be fun, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Absolutely. Well, that does it for this week's show, but before we let you go, make sure to check out our exclusive interview with Laura Treem right after this. For Karen Vega, Lennox Williams, Michael Rottenbaum, Jeffrey Will, and the entire Met Report staff, I'm Kiwi Brockington, and we'll see you on campus.